Welcome to the show, everybody. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm seeing these little hands on stage. Uh, and this really caught me off guard. It's a weird thing to, uh, to see at the top of the set. There you go, you can just have that. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Stand on the Spot. Uh, make some noise if you've never seen this show before. All right. And uh, anybody uh, coming back or heard of the show before? Yeah. yeah. All right. Heck yeah. Uh, so this is how there's lots of little hands on stage. I'm sorry. I've got to sweep the stage real quick of the, the tiny hand. You can have all of these. Um, <laughs> what a weird start to a show. Just tiny hands just off, uh, off the start. Uh, well, that's perfect because this show, uh, everything that you're about to see is completely improvised. I had no idea that there was going to be tiny hands up here on the stage. That's how we're starting the show, okay? So we the comedians are coming up here with no prepared material. We're going to ask you guys, the audience, for suggestions. You're going to yell stuff out, and then we have to create stand-up on the spot based off of what you yell out. So you guys are the co-star of this show, right? So it's very important that you yell out good topics and good suggestions, right? Uh, you'll see, you know, comedians up here, you'll be like, wow, that was amazing. How is this all improv? And then other times you're like, this is a train wreck. <laughs> but this lineup, like, I, for, just make some noise for this lineup. If you know who's... Moon Tower was super cool. Uh, I made a very short list of comedians that I wanted, and they gave me everybody on my list. And I was blown away. So I'm super hyped about this show, and I know you guys are. Uh, if you're fans of anybody's podcast or anything like that that are on this lineup, don't yell out stuff that you've heard them talk about before, you know? Let's give them something new and fresh to talk about because it makes it more fun for them as well. Cool? All right, coming at you strong with that substitute teacher energy right now. Just laying out all the rules real quick. Listen up, everybody, all right? This is how the show's gonna go. So uh, now that you know we got all the business out of the way, let's start having some fun. What do you say, let's kick this thing off. All right, could I get my first suggestion up in here? Trailer Park Dominatrix. Uh, <laughs> I like this crowd already because uh, a guy in the row behind him endorsed it. He just goes, nice. <laughs> like the whole room was like, we would love for Jeremiah to talk about this. <laughs> Trailer Park Dominatrix. Um, well, okay. <laughs> um, First of all, um, you know, do you like getting whipped with clotheslines? <laughs> you know, we gotta, we gotta make do with what God gave us, okay? You know, if you're into being hit and stuff, I got a wooden spoon with your name on it, okay? That I just made some great crab macaroni and cheese for 79 cents on the stove. Yeah, I've been slaving all over the stove the whole day. I will sear you with this spoon right now. We'll cattle prod you, yes. Man, oh. Trailer Park Dominatrix. Mm-mm-mm. That's, uh, you know, what, what, what kind of... That, that can get real murky. A Trailer Park Dominatrix, what kind of mask do they wear? Hopefully not a white one with a hood, you know what I mean? It gets real murky real fast. You know, what kind of uniform do they have? Is it just bib overalls that they're coming out and then like the guy is tied up to a radiator like in Saw and he's like, oh, this isn't sexy at all. Can we stop this? This is terrifying. I don't like this. I'm not enjoying this at all. Well, you're gonna like it. I'm gonna come at you like a freaking tornado. <laughs> don't you even worry about this. I feel like I did great with that suggestion. Can I get another one? Thank you. We're getting this show off to a great start. Let me get some more suggestions. Uh, telemarketers uh, all uh, address what's going on next door very quickly. Um, uh, it's an uh, old person rave that's happening next door. Uh, there's walkers, there's canes, uh, they all light up. It's very. You gotta see it after the show. It's a it's a sight to see. What was this other suggestion in the back? 
Was that? Alex Jones. Uh, keep them coming. I don't. I don't watch Alex Jones at all. <laughs> I like how Texas like we all wanted to hear about Alex Jones. <laughs> Are you guys electing little mayors in the audience to just be like, uh, yes, and that is exactly what we wanted to hear about. You can be a little bit more vocal, give the comedians a little bit more options and choices, you know what I mean? Burger King? Gynecology. Let's see what I can do with that. Uh, man, I wish I had a dick doctor. <laughs> That I could just go to and be like, uh, is this bump normal? <laughs> like, you know my dick, you know what I mean? Like just having like a fellow guy to like trust. He does not behind me on this at all. <laughs> like what? That's some queer stuff right there. What are you talking about, man? You want, you want to show another man your penis? <laughs> we don't roll like that in Austin, man. Uh, no, you know, come on. Guys, come on, you know, having somebody to have confidence in, it'd be like, you know, over the years, being like, hey man, is this, is it looking worse now? Like, like, <laughs> like, hey man, you took photos, there's charts and everything. Like, I want to know the development of my penis. Is it getting worse looking? Is it getting better looking? Is it getting smaller? I'm actually worried about that. <laughs> Next suggestion. You guys gotta be, you have to be a little bit more confident with your suggestions. Because guess what? This is gonna be going on the entire show. The comedian's asking you guys, and some of you might be like, oh, well, I didn't pay for me to be involved in the show. Well, you're here, you're in it. So let's do it. Let's make the most out of it. What do you say? Kangaroo. Boxing kangaroo? Cruise ships. Cruise ships. Um, okay, taxidermy. Uh, that's a weird job. That's a weird profession to want to dedicate your life to. Like, you're just like stuffing animals all day, right? They gotta, that, that's gotta get to you a little bit after a while. Just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I would get freaked out if I have animals all around me that are stuffed. Like, I would start looking around and, and start feeling guilty, like, why? Like, you know, you start hearing voices and stuff. Like, I was killed in cold blood. What? <laughs> Who was that? Hello? I'm gonna bail on this suggestion. Next suggestion. <laughs> That's so specific and weird. Who would win in a fight between David Spade and Andy Dick? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Andy Dick would for sure. Because uh, I spent a night with Andy Dick one time uh, in LA. Not like I spent the night at his place, but some weird things happened when we hung out. I was, uh, I was a, a young comic, <laughs> how he likes them. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I, was, uh, I was hanging out at the Second City. Uh, I've been doing stand-up and I've been doing improv for a long time. And I was interning at Second City. And the artistic director there was like, you want to hang out with Andy Dick? And I'm like fresh off the boat from Kansas. I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> and uh, I've never seen a man molest more people in one night and have no repercussions at all. It was unbelievable. It was like the creepiest superpower I've ever seen. He was going up to jacked bartenders and be like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey. Oh, that's nice. And, and this big guy's like, oh, Andy, what are you doing? <laughs> and then he would just straight up grow up and be like, Andy. It was like a weird sitcom everywhere he we went. Everybody just kept going, Andy. <laughs> He's like, ah. <laughs> I'm like, that dude just molested like six people. How is this happening? I'm so glad I moved away from Kansas. It's the best decision ever. Yeah, um, there was a long night of things that happened. A lot of people um, that he touched. Uh, he tried to touch me and I was like, Andy, if we're gonna hang out, I can't be one of your cronies. <laughs> He's like, oh. 
I made Andy Dick very sad that night. Because I had my Kansas values. I'm like, we don't do this in Kansas. <laughs> And uh, at the end of the night, he got, uh, he got very, very drunk, very wasted. Uh, he got progressively more and more drunk as the night went on. And uh, he, uh, uh, we ended up running from the cops at one moment. It's this really long story that happened. Uh, and I was like, Andy, if you are gonna go inside that youth hostel right now, <laughs> I can't hang out with you anymore, dude. He's like, I've made my choice. <laughs> he goes, and I didn't see him again for like eight years. And I, was, I always wondered, I was like, what happened to that guy? And he has no recollection of our night together. But every time I see him, I'm like, I remember <laughs> everything. <laughs> and that's my Andy Dick story. So he could definitely beat up David Spade. So there you go. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna kick this thing off. How you feeling, huh? You get it? We're having a good time. Uh, I'm very excited to bring this next comedian up to the stage. He's coming in from New York, you know, from podcasts. Uh, he's got a bunch of amazing viral YouTube videos you should check out. Please welcome Andrew Schultz to the stage, y'all. Come on. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Keep it going for Jeremiah, everybody. Jeremiah. Oh, man. I can't believe Andy Dick is gay. That's... <laughs> My mind is fucking blown. I thought that was the whole shtick. That he's pretending to be gay. And that's why it's funny, because he's not gay, and he's just acting gay. Now he's really just a creep. You can't be gay and act gay. Now you're a molester. This is insane to find that out. Like all the movies, like we was doing a dick sucking practice or whatever, like that's only funny if he's straight. If you're actually gay, you should suck dick good. Otherwise you're a shitty gay or a lesbian. Okay, no suggestions, go. Mushrooms. Um, don't like them. <laughs> don't like them. Tried them one time. Uh, they're interesting at first. It was really cool. It was like, uh, how do I describe it? It's like taking the condom off of colors. <laughs> do you know? Does that make sense? Right? So it's like... You know, like, I'm not big into, like, drugs, but I tried them, and I remember, you know, I remember, like, the first time I fucked, and, like, I fucked without the condom. Or well, actually, I remember the first time I fucked, and the condom broke, and it was one of those fire and ice condoms, and I thought when it broke, I was like, oh, this shit is kicking in. Like, this is fucking, this is the fire part, let's go. Uh, and then... But I, re I remember when I was doing the mushrooms, I was looking at shit, and I was like, whoa, this is cool. And it really kicked in, and I was like, oh, that's purple. Like, oh, yeah, that's, oh, that is purple right there. That's the most beautiful purple. I know, where's this purple been my whole life? Okay, another suggestion. Mark Zuckerberg, love him. Um, just show me the shit I want to see. <laughs> Why are we upset at that, right? It's like, oh, this is only the things you want to see. What a dick. No, thank you. Thank you so much for weeding out all the tampon commercials I don't need to see. I need Viagra. That's what I want to look at. Why is he a dick? I really like, like, didn't, isn't everything easier now? <laughs> everything is so much easier. What are we complaining? Thank you, Mark. I love him. You know what I mean? And he's a billionaire who stayed with his wife. Like, this guy's a legend. Have you seen his wife? She doesn't look like a billionaire's wife. I'm sorry, she doesn't. Okay? There's not, she looks like a thousandaire's wife. That's a thousandaire's wife. And he stayed with her, okay? This guy's the man. 
I wouldn't have done it. I'd have to be like, look, I'm a billionaire now, so you should understand that shit. That is, did you think this was gonna last, you know? All right, next. This is fun. I like doing it. Go ahead. This is good. Go, go. go. What'd you say? Groping magicians. Groping magicians. I bet they could make a Me Too disappear. Hey! Now we're cooking with gas, guys. All right, next. What is it? I like lady. I think girls with, with some hangy pussy got better personality. <laughs> they do. They're more extroverted, like their pussies. They, it's the uh, the girls with the any pussies. They never got good conversation points. Their stories suck. But the Audi girls, they're just like, give me a hug, you know. It's, I don't mind an Audi pussy at all, you know. It just looks a little weird when they like when you take the, they're on top and they take the dick out and it's just hanging there like balls and you're like whoa, <laughs> like whoa that's you look like you got balls. <laughs> but whatever, you know, or like you know. <laughs> Pussy, you gotta make the whole thing wet too. Like inside pussy, you just you get the outside a little wet. You insert it, everything's good. But hey, pussy, there's shit that gets in the way. You know what I mean? Like the whole area needs to be wet for insertion. Cause you can snag. You know what I mean? You can snag, and then like she's looking at you, and you're looking at her, like let you know why I'm snagging. We know why this shit got caught. Come on. It's gotta be separate. You gotta really open that. <laughs> so yeah, I like hangy pussy. It's cool. The inside pussy's cool. You know, <laughs> hangy pussy is just funnier. <laughs> it's just funnier to look at, right? Don't you look at it? You're like, oh shit, you didn't finish packing. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't you look at it? Like, oh shit, that's what's up. I'm like. Spread her leg like ah. <laughs> laundry. Uh, all right, one, uh, a couple more, one more maybe. Okay. Sorority girls. Sorority girls. Nah, who cares? Uh, <laughs> next one. Electric scooters. Uh, electric scooters. Hey, those shits are liberating, man. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Don't, hey. <laughs> hey. I didn't do a lot of scootering or even biking a lot in my life. I grew up in New York, so it was like taxis and subways, so I never really felt the wind like that. <laughs> hey, man, that's, it's hard to be like, it's vulnerable, but it feels good. Like, it's just, honestly, I don't have great posture, but when I'm on that scooter, I'm like, like, I feel, right? Your chest is high. You feel like Rose on the Titanic. You're just like, I see why Rose gave Jackson pussy, because if somebody gave me that experience that wasn't lift, you know, like, if it was just a dude, like, hey, here, just feel free for a little. I'd be like, all right, you deserve something, bro. You deserve something, bro. All right, all right, I think, I think it's time to bring back up Jeremiah. We're gonna bring back up Jeremiah. And then, uh, Andrew Schultz, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. That was fun. Thanks, guys. Uh, so we're gonna take a few suggestions together. See what we can uh, see what we can do. Oh, Kanye. <laughs> Okay, Kanye, Kanye. What are you thinking about Kanye, Jeremiah? Uh, Kanye, uh, I love Kanye, but I've heard nothing but he's a dick in person. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a big fan. I think that's why he has tits a little. Because I feel like that happens to people with shitty, like, that's karma for men a lot of times. Like, because there's different ways to get fat, and like, usually it's not your tits. For men, right? But he is just tits, so I'm like, all right. And you gotta admire him that like he made a whole different style of dressing cool to fit his tits. Like, that's true. 
Yes, I like that about him, I guess. Yeezys and squeezies. <laughs> Yo, this show is great, man. <laughs> Tell the rest of the comics it's canceled. It's just gonna be me and Jeremiah for right. the night. <laughs> that's funny. Yeezys and Squeezies. That's our next. That's our next duo album, yeah, right? <laughs> Andrew Schultz, right, everybody. Guys, thank you, One question: Do you like sex? Yes? Then you'll love BlueChew.com. What? Get that dick swole with Blick Chew. Blick Chew? Blue Chew. You like that? Pole Satan? Fat pee pee between your legs? Wouldn't you like to last longer and go those extra rounds? Oh, I came too quickly. Nah, with Blue Chew, you young stallion, you. The chewables from BlueChew.com are prescribed online by a doctor and made in the USA. So go to BlueChew.com and use the promo code WONDERS. If you do that on your first order, you get free. When you use the promo code WONDERS, just pay that $5 ship and that's it. Get that dick swole with Blue Chew. Now, go back to enjoying Stand Up on the Spot on Jeremiah Wonders. Yeah! We're having fun now, guys. Uh, very excited to bring up this next comedian to the stage. A good buddy of mine. He was just on Conan recently, and you may have seen him on Saturday Night Live. Please welcome John Renitsky to the stage. Come on. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, did, uh, I didn't know I was doing this show. This is my worst nightmare of all time. I write like a joke a year, so this is fucking... This could go terrible. This, uh, poof, uh, just freaking out. I feel like I'm on a, this is a middle school talent show. Uh, or I'm up here on a dare. Um, let's see, okay, I heard uh, floppy pussy in the back. No, I'm supposed to ask, right, okay. Uh, what's that now? <laughs> nice, you really. You really know how to troll me right off the bat. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, Lauren Michaels hired me and then fired me shortly thereafter. Uh, I was on SNL very quickly. It was like, a, I, I, was, I basically took a tour of 30 Rock. I was like a, I was like a page. Will you let me finish, <laughs> Jesus? I'm now, now I'm doing therapy up here because she yelled out Lauren Michaels. And that's my mom. How dare you? You fucking come all the way to Texas to taunt me, mom? Shitty is that? <sighs> Still have nightmares. Still have SNL nightmares. Anyway, it's fine. I'm good. I'm happy. I made it. I made it here, and I did. I did stand up at a bowling alley in Michigan, Muskegon, last week. So my career is on the up. <laughs> What was the, uh, what was the other thing that got yelled at? Bowling! Well, I just fucking said the bowling thing, man. <laughs> Did you think you just came up with that? <laughs> but you're so fucked up, you're like, bowling? Well, I'm a genius, I just thought of bowling. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> you're not happy with me. You're not enjoying yourself. You couldn't seem more disappointed. Sorry to have let you down. <laughs> goat yoga. Yes, I emceed goat yoga today. That was an event, uh, which I didn't know existed. Yoga and goats. Because why? Why should that exist? Why should that be a thing? And that made me realize we don't need any more things. We've come up with all the ideas. <laughs> we should stop at goat yoga. And also I thought, why did they ask me to emcee it? Did they ask anybody else? Or were they like, we know John will say yes. <laughs> Lauren Michaels fired him so quickly, his confidence is low. He'll just MC goat yoga at noon. <laughs> but I get it, they didn't, pay, they didn't pay me to do it, so that's why I said yes. <laughs> I'll do anything. Uh, what, okay. 
What do we got next? Um, Makane's, uh, Makane's cheerleaders. Okay, which one of these should I address? Uh, Makane, I, I spent time with Matthew McConaughey. He hosted SNL when I was there. And he, um, he, uh, like the funny thing is, though, so like the host will like come around and uh, pitch, I you pitch ideas to the host. And they're only supposed to come around for like a couple minutes and then they have things to do. But Matthew McConaughey came into my office for like 45 minutes. <laughs> he drank a full bottle of wine. <laughs> uh, packed a lip and never spit once. This is true. <laughs> Pretty insane. And I can honestly tell you that in that time, I have no idea what the fuck he talked about. <laughs> it was like, all right. I'm gonna be like a comedy falcon. <laughs> I'm gonna swoop down. <laughs> drop funny eggs in your brain. <laughs> and then car fly off, never to be seen again. <laughs> I don't know what, uh, yeah, he was, he's a wild guy. Like I pitched him, I remember I pitched him like a sex like a like a sex therapist thing where he's like to um, act uh, what was it? it was like an overeager sex therapist. And he was like, all right, let's get up, let's act it out, let's do it, get up. He was like grinding on me. It was wild. I swear to God. I also went to a I went to a Super Bowl party that he was at once, and I remember I was like not watching the game. <laughs> at all because I'm not interested and I was like playing with the there were like kids at the party this sound, that sounds bad it, why does it have to sound bad when I say I was playing with kids and now me explaining that it was bad also sounds bad like if you say I swear I didn't diddle a kid they're like that guy diddled a kid anyway <sighs> fuck ruined my whole career with this one show but I remember I was like like playing games or whatever, like doing dumb stuff with the kids. My shirt was like this, whatever. And, then, and like it was like the last play of the game. McConaughey kind of was like, "Do you guys see what just happened?" And he's like, "Oh, fuck, man, that's disappointing." He was like, "So, because he's like the most manly man. He's like, uh, he always looks like he just got out of the ocean, but also just chopped down lumber." He's like, <laughs> "How are you clean and dirty? Like, what is your?" He's the most McConaughey, he's everything you'd want him to be, that guy. He literally introduced himself to 40 people. He, because on the Monday, you, inter, you meet all the writers and cast, and he introduced himself to 40 people. It's just McConaughey. <laughs> McConaughey. <laughs> McConaughey. <laughs> you could say anything of that guy. You just start listing menu items at Taco Bell. I'll take a rancho, cucamonga, burrito, with a bibbidi bop bop. That was a little Ferris Bueller in there, I'm not sure about that. All right, what else we got? I got the light, but one more suggestion. And the thing about the Home Depot is, I've never been in a Home Depot. That's the thing about a Home Depot. I'm just not a grown up. I don't know that I'll ever go to a Home Depot. I don't know that I'll ever know how much I'm supposed to measure. I don't anything. I've never measured anything. I'm, I'm a disappointment as a man. Yeah. I measured my penis in eighth. In eighth grade, I measured my penis. And I haven't measured it since, because I know it's the same size. You know? I've gotten bigger, but he has not. He has not. All right, Jeremiah, get on up here. Thank you, guys. I survived. I survived. That's scary. Well, we still have more to do. John Radinsky! Thank you. 
All right, we have more to do here. I, I imagine, like, you, like, you, you said you've never been to a Home Depot, which means you probably don't have, like, a, a tape measure or anything, like how most people, like, would measure their penis. <laughs> so I just imagine you, like, going into your mom's, like, sewing box <laughs> and grabbing, like, linen measurement. And like, okay. <laughs> just, like, laying it down, like, on a table. Yeah. It's, all that's true. I'm in her dress as well, but all that is true, yeah. <laughs> Up her skirt. <laughs> uh, let's get a suggestion. More suggestions. Yeah, what are you guys gonna run out of suggestions? What's that? Dating apps. Dating apps. Are you are you a Tinder guy? Are you? I was. I I met Bumble? my I met my girlfriend on a dating app. Oh really? Yeah, on the it's a douchey one though. What's it called? It's called Raya. Oh, that's for that's, that's for like the uh, yeah. There's a lot of terrible people on it. It's a lot of like uh, it's a celebrity. Dating it's a lot app, right? of like uh, I would imagine the guys are like shirtless DJs and photographers. Uh, a lot of Burning Man photos, and then the girls are a lot. Of, it's a lot of like Instagram. But my girlfriend's not one of them. But it's a lot of you have to be like excited. It's gross. I feel badly still, that I did it. Still. <laughs> You're still but I did it. I'm not on it. No, I'm not on it. You're still in that relationship from that? Or? Yeah, so I did. I had one successful. And, how, yeah. and so for us commoners, how, do, uh, how, does, how does Raya work? You have to be like invited, right? You, do, you have to be invited. And there's like a slideshow where you pick a song. And uh, it's, like a, it's like a montage of like. The, <laughs> yours, is, your, yours, yeah. <laughs> yours is just 523,000 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> And she's like, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's just a flip thing. It's just different versions of me doing this, I'm landing like that. It's all just one. Does movement. he do magic or is he just expressive? I can't tell. No, I picked the song "Isn't She Lovely," and it was supposed to be that I was the she. It was supposed to be like a supposed to be like a bat mitzvah montage, but nobody picked up on it. <laughs> <laughs> you just post all of, like your senior pictures on there, like you like standing on rocks for whatever reason or whatever. You, well, like, I had you in one. A field. I had one that that didn't work, which was uh, I did my own narration of my of the slideshow. So I was like, "This is me as a kid. Welcome uh, to my slideshow." Here's me at my <laughs> my the bar mitzvah. Do you think anybody does like Mr. Movie Voice? Like one like you're about to enter my life. <laughs> <laughs> that could be good. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. If you're interested, plus one. Yeah. yeah. yeah watch one. Avengers, Endgame, press two. <laughs> What's the movie phone guy doing now? I bet he is just like begging for a job. The movie phone guy? You're, the guy who does that you're, voice? You're he's gonna, not, he's not pull, working at all anymore. You're huh? going to pull up to a fast food place and be like, hello, how are you? And you're like, <laughs> is that <laughs> you? Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, it's not come well for him. You know what? I think that's really funny. I don't care what these fucking people think yeah. anymore. You know what? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Stay I with me. desperately Stay need with your me. validation. It was so good when I was measuring my penis just three minutes ago. Let's get another suggestion. Boy Scout camp. That guy diddles kids. Uh, Stay away from that guy. That's way too confident to yell that. Yeah, he, he right when you, you said that he did old kids, he raised his hand and did the devil horns like, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I actually think that was bowling guy. I think that was bowling guy. I'm almost positive. Did you do Boy Scouts? Um, no, I told you. I, I don't know how to do any of that kind I, of stuff. I, I, did was, it, I did it for one day. I, I went to the class and yeah. they're like, all right, there's like a candle lighting ceremony. And I was like, there is there, the one that I went, or maybe it was a cult. I don't know what happened. Was I, I think you were involved in something else. Was I, was I in a cult in Kansas or was I Boy <laughs> yeah. Scouts? Yeah, I'm not sure. But even me as a kid, I was like, this is nerdy, dude. I was like, see you later. Yeah. <laughs> You were way too cool for it. I know, like, yeah, I started smoking a cigarette. I was like, see you idiots later. <laughs> like, dude, you're seven. Don't worry about it. Wow, you were really cool. I'm yeah. very impressed yeah, by yeah. that. I still think maybe you were in a cult, though. Yeah, I was in a cult. Yeah. John Ranitsky, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah. Another guy I always love having on the show. Uh, this guy is coming from New York. You may know him from Saturday Night Live. Please welcome Chris Red to the stage, everybody. Give it up, everybody. You can see before me, man. What's up? 
Yeah, to you too, lady. Yeah. Yeah, yeah different yeah, white guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a guy that pays every bill on time. Yeah. You ready to go? <laughs> you sound like you're always ready to leave. You seen that dad at the water park? All right, kid, you guys ready? Yeah, I'm on the spot, nigga. That's just like throwing a nigga out there with no context to it. Just to let the white people know what's about to happen. Let me get a suggestion or whatever. Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia? Cool, man. I'm glad you gave me your word of the day, too. Fibromyalgia! <laughs> Did it. Wait a minute, motherfucker. I'm still on fibromyalgia. And then I'll do smart watches. Still be yelling at me. This is a bad show for a black person with a room full of white people. Yelling opinions. I already went on Twitter today. I don't need this. Shut the fuck up, lady. You're almost as annoying as Ariana Grande. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. She's the devil. Uh, I'm just playing. Or am I? You don't even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just playing. Everybody shut up. You ready to go? Why did you yell out fibromyalgia? I don't even know what the fuck that is. I think I'm saying it wrong every single time I say it back to you. Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. Is it a disease? That's stupid as fuck. It's your imagination. <laughs> Come with me. Shut up. Don't you ever say that to me again. Also, that's a weird thing for me to say to you. Like, I don't hang out with you. <laughs> when will you have a chance to say that again? Smart watches? Uh, shit. I had a smart watch. I, uh, I, I, I didn't like how much it told me what to do all the time. Like, it was always telling me, check some shit. You can't get up, walk around. I'm like, no, nigga. <laughs> get, hey, hey, uh, it's time to move. <laughs> oh, what, I'm glad you yelled something out where no one else uh, has it so they can't relate to any of the real, th yeah, it's a good time to go take a shit. I will never shit shame you, all right? If you gonna go shit, you shit right now. Cause if I had to shit, fuck all of y'all, you'd be looking at an empty stage. I'd be back there living my life. And as soon as I wipe good enough, I'd be like, yeah, you know? It's like you, that's a call back from some dumb shit. Shouldn't have called it back. <laughs> the yeah shit, they're pretty much done with. Smart watches was a bad thing to yell. Only because I don't have anything to say about it, really. I like this watch. Um, it's my first real watch uh, that I went and I bought it and everybody was wearing a suit, whether they worked there or not. And that's, that's uh, yeah, I, I really like this watch. It's the first watch my, I had when my dad was like, damn nigga, you got money. And I was like, nah, I don't. <laughs> but I got a watch now, you know. <laughs> Yell something else. Fake titties? Yeah, wait, what was that other one? Tickle Me Elmo? That's a freaky ass dog, bro. Like, like in, the, in the Toy Story world, Tickle Me Elmo's a pervert. He's like, yeah, I, I know we got adventures, my nigga, but just tickle me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Cause you couldn't be a Tickle Me person. You couldn't just be in your office like, hey, y'all, y'all know what time it is. <laughs> Get them fingers ready, it's Tickle Me Earl! <laughs> Earl, you're fired. <laughs> fake titties, fake titties, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a lady's choice, or a man, or how you identify. Gender is fluid, or sexuality is fluid. Fluids happen, regardless. <laughs> I don't have like any, I, I, of course I like natural titties, but I like fake titties too. I think I'm a product of America. I like titties in general. I do, I like all titties. Uh, 
my mom had big titties and I hated it because I, at some point when you were a kid, uh, your friends come over and uh, you have to like beat one of their ass from seeing your mama's titties in a different way. You know, I had a childhood friend, uh, like like all people, uh, I think, and and I remember we were young, but it was like we, we were just starting to watch Cinemax and uh, <laughs> and like every channel after 10 on basic cable. And we used to see titties and we were like, oh shit. And then my moms came down, uh, well, we was in trouble. You know, you ever like be like jumping around on shit and then like you hear footsteps and oh shit, freeze, nigga. If you steal enough, she'll, she'll think we're dead, you know? And so we used to be so scared that she used to walk in, uh, all walk in on us because we were making too much noise. We were really late. We were like playing games and shit. And she would open that door and she'd be like, hey! And I remember the first time we saw too much of her titty. And, uh, and my friend was like, damn! And I was like, I will murder you right here. <laughs> Put your titty away, mama. And she slapped me. Uh, but she did also cover that titty. And that's all. <laughs> That's all I really needed. Wow, that's a damaging thought. Uh, look at something else. Law and order. Law and order. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, growing up, I was uh, I got arrested too much to enjoy the show. <laughs> like, why do I want to watch the fake version of what I just went through? <laughs> I like, I like uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a proven structure in a, in a TV show that works, though. You know what I'm saying? They, they, like a cry, so we try to figure out the cry, so we'll bring somebody in. You think that's the sp suspect, but the suspect's not the suspect, but then, oh shit, it turns out, nigga, he did it. And then, and then boom, 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 like three times. And I'm like, that's such a, I wish I could write a show like that about some shit I'm really passionate about. You know, like fake titties. Uh, it's like, who needs and titties? Wait, that show's out. It's like everything uh, on TLC that's not surgery. Um, damn, that shit, that, that shit unraveled quick. Like, it, I, I had an idea and then it just, ooh, we on the spot. Um, I don't have nothing really to say about Law and Order outside of what I said already. Uh, what else? Two Star Uber. Two Star Uber? Oh, uh, damn. I don't really two star. I've never two, I two star one time. And it was this dude um, who again. didn't blink the whole time. Um, <laughs> no, he, he truly did not. I, I know how, how crazy it sounds, but I was, I was looking for eyelids the whole time. And this nigga just didn't blink at all, bro. And then he handed me a naked Tootsie Roll. And uh, <laughs> no, he, he, he was like, you know, well, I, he was like, yay, if you're hungry, I got chocolates. And I'm like, well, I don't see any candy baskets. And then he handed me a Tootsie Roll with no wrapper on it. And I was like, what is this prostitute ass chocolate you handed me? Two stars. <laughs> Uber is so crazy to me. That's a, it's, a, it's a crazy concept that all we need is a name and we're comfortable for somebody to take us where we live forever. Damn, you shit and got beers. You a fucking magician. All right, cool, man. Thanks. Uh, Jim, come on up here, bro. Let's fuck around. Chris Red, y'all. Yeah. I still love this show. Yeah, man. It's fucking great. What do you think, uh, what kind of suggestion can we get? Boxer briefs. Boxer, Boxer briefs. briefs. Yeah, you are, are you a, uh, you know, I, I like, I like the boxer brief. I, I like to think about the man who invented the boxer brief. Like, he saw boxes and he saw briefs and he was like, enough of this shit! What about the middleman? There will never be long balls again. <laughs> oh, my balls, they just hang with the briefs. They're so brief. What about a happy medium? <laughs> Yeah, I like this show. <laughs> I like how everybody's immediately on board and then they're like, nope! <laughs> yeah, yeah, like real quick, like, yeah, let's get another suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put a box of briefs on dogs. And, and, and put the tail through the peel? And, uh, I just let, I let the dog figure it out. I'm like, hey, Sparky, or whatever your fucking name is. How smart are you actually? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is a Steve Harvey show coming out next fall. <laughs> 
how smart are you actually? <laughs> I would totally watch that. I show. would watch the shit out of that. Yeah. You serious? Yeah. This is watch an American be like, I'm smart as hell. They, yeah. feel like, they walk away like, I'm a dumb piece of shit. Yeah. That's fucking well, great. Well, like, I'm a contestant on there, right? Yeah. And, I, uh, and you know, you're hosting the Steve Harvey. I'm just excited to be there. And uh, the first question that you ask me, and as I'm like there, you know, with the buzzer or whatever it is, and we'll see, like, if it's on the board or whatever. Yeah. I'm waiting. I'm like, okay, I'm ready, Steve. What do you got for me? All right, all right. I don't have an impression because somebody else on the show already does this, nigga. <laughs> I don't practice impressions for no fucking reason. That's crazy. <laughs> the fuck do I look like? <laughs> Shit. So my, my impression's my Uncle Charles as Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is all part of the show. <laughs> all right, Earl. I don't know why I keep saying Earl. Earl, how many Great Lakes are there? Um, three? No, nigga, I don't know and you don't know. How smart are we really? <laughs> Chris Rock, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, another buddy coming in from New York uh, to do the show. Uh, he's got a great podcast called Tim Dillon Goes to Hell. You may have seen him on the Joe Rogan Experience. Please welcome Tim Dillon! Thank you, hello everybody. Austin, Texas, good to be here. What a good spot. I look like if Steve Bannon drove a lift. Uh, and he should, he should. I look like a guy whose ideas belong in a car. Um, okay, well, now we, will, now we get uh, suggestions from you and then I will do comedy. I, I did not understand what that was. NRA. NRA, the National Rifle Association. The National Rifle Association. Very funny, very funny. I can't think of a topic that could be funnier than gun violence or schools or, you know, kids and guns and the NRA. I've never shot a gun. I've never had, the only gun, the only gun that I love, which I would never want banned, is the sour cream gun at Taco Bell. Have you, have you seen that gun? It is a legitimate weapon. It's a gun. Have you seen it squirts? sour cream into a chalupa or gordita, something like that. That's the only gun that I would mar, you know? But I get the guns are good. Have guns, you know? I think some people should have them, but others shouldn't. How do you feel about that? Is that extreme? Okay. This feels like a very success, I feel like I'm running for city council in Austin right now. and. It's very precarious, I don't really know. I feel like this is how people should run for president. People should just shout issues at them. NRA! Trans people in the f service! This is how it should work. Uh, NRA, you know, I, I would do a gig for the NRA, but I'll do a gig for anyone, you know what I mean? I don't, human traffickers, sign me up, I don't care. I need money, so. NRA, that's what I've got to see. What else, anybody else? Gravy train, gravy train. These suggestions are so fucking high. Is everyone on DMT right now? Like these barely make any, gravy train. A train full of gravy. I wish I knew where one was. I would take a gravy train if I could get on a train. Gravy is not something you should eat on a train. But I have. I have had Kentucky Fried Chicken where you are given gravy and I've put it on the mashed potatoes while on a train, this is true, from New York to Long Island. I don't mind getting in on a train, getting condiments, you know? Nothing wrong with that. I appreciate that. I li and I appreciate you guys. I like after every laugh if we can get very quiet. It helps me as a comedian get very, very quiet after every single laugh. I, I like to start at zero every time and just 
pull you guys out of yourselves. That's really gravy train. Okay, well, that's my feelings on that. Uh, any anyone else? Dads who coach their daughters in softball. This woman needs therapy. I don't think this is about a comedy show anymore. I think she's had some issues. Dads who coach their daughters in softball and embarrass them in front of their friends when their daughters are just trying and aren't lesbians but are just aggressive because women can be aggressive. And they don't have boyfriends for no reason. It's just because it's hard to date when you're committed to hockey as a female who doesn't eat pussy but just loves competition and hockey. And if my father would just know that. <sighs> that was my SNL audition. Uh, that was my monologue. That was my monologue for Saturday Night Live. It didn't work out, it did not work out, um, which is okay. But that was eerily, uh, that was very specific that this woman, dads who coached their daughters in softball, what do I give a fuck? Coach your kids, they're all losers. That's the truth. And I like, I used to watch that show Dance Moms, which was a great show, because I like seeing greatness demanded of children. I love that. I like seeing kids cry. I like seeing them have that moment before they go on where they get all nervous and they're like, it matters, this matters! I like seeing that. I like seeing kids splinter into different personalities at a young age. So I like child sports and I'm glad they don't pay them. I'm glad the college basketball people don't get paid. I think it's great. Good. You sh all right, so there's that. What else? Circumcision, you've yelled that five times. Circum circumcision. I mean, listen, I don't know. I mean, I'm circumcised, but thank you for that woo. I don't know, I might be happier without it. I don't, it's something that's, you know, I don't have any religious feeling on it. I don't know. I, I, it's a very, it's, I guess it's very personal. I think female circumcision I am for. <laughs> that, that I know, I am for that. I am for female, that's what we're talking about, right? We're talking about clitorectomies. That I am for. Um, but male circumcision. <laughs> Those of you who aren't laughing at that, are you, I feel like I'm way too convincing when I say that. It's fucking Austin, you can't relax. You're like, wait, what did he say? That's not right. All right, one more suggestion. Hot air okay, one guy said hot air balloons, and then somebody else, what did you say? Slip and slide. Slip and slide. Uh, let's go with that. Uh, and whoever said hot air balloons, kill yourself. The fucking old timey dumb Austin suggestion is that. Hot air balloons! Make a joke! Make a joke about late stage capitalism with hot air balloons! Burn in hell. Um, uh, slip and slide. I was a fat kid. When you're a fat kid, nobody wants you to come to their home. This is reality. Nobody wants you to come to their home. They will be friends with you on the, on a street somewhere, but they don't want you in their house. Here's what they also don't want you doing. Running and throwing your body on a wet piece of plastic and then hurling yourself into their backyard. That didn't happen for me. I would walk by a slip and slide and see it, it looked fun. But I was never invited. No one said, hey, Tim, why don't you come over here, get naked, and slide on this plastic. We got it all wet. Even pedophiles were like, no, 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 you keep walking. You better get a personality. Why don't you get a talent? I'm gonna watch the rest of these kids. Imagine a pedophile watching a slip and slide, and then I just came on, and they were like, god damn it. The funny one's gonna have a go at it. The personality. Did you like slip and slides? Is that why you're asking? 
You don't know why it popped in your brain? Well, what else is going on up there? Okay. Let's get Jeremiah back up. We'll do a few. Come on, give it up for Jeremiah. It's been a lot of fun. Austin's a great place, and I mean that in, in any, as a joke. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, that was fun. That was like an ultimate showdown set between you and Austin. That yeah, amazing. well, that's right. I mean, fucking, I'm sick of, I'm sick of eating smoked meat on a garbage can lid like a raccoon and pretending it's fucking good. Grow up, grow up. Build a real fucking rat. Not everything's got to be eaten in a parking lot. Not everything's a food truck. I want to sit down like a big boy. To fucking sit on the street and eat a turkey leg like a fucking fat king from Game of Thrones about to get executed. <laughs> I've never felt fatter in a city. They're like, you can eat this in front of every... No, I don't. I don't want to eat it in the public square. <laughs> Back booth of diner. Turn lights off. Really, really cockroach with a light flips on Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for shows like this. My material's been bombing here the whole week. Just horrible. Just tech bros staring at me the whole week. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, let's get a suggestion real quick. Guy Fieri. A, a, a comic does a really good bit on him. Let's not do that. Let's do something else. Shane Torres. Go, go Google Shane Torres' Guy Fieri bit. It's amazing. Yeah. The Olympics. The Olympics. Wait, the fucking Olympics. <laughs> What do I have to say about, let me tell you what I hope happens at the Olympics. I hope ISIS goes to the Olympics, okay? Because I've always hated the fucking Olympics and I don't care about Olympians and no one else does either. No one gives a shit about them. Oh, you can run track and field. Who gives a fuck? I hope you die. Uh, I hope ISIS goes to the Olympics and blows it up. I don't like the opening ceremony or the closing ceremony. It's disgusting, okay? There's people dying on the street and people dressed up like dragons. It's disgusting. I hate the Olympics. It's stupid. I was a swimmer as a kid. No one cared. People care about sports like football and basketball because people make a lot of money and they kill their wife and we still don't care. No, show me a track and field star who gets away with that kind of fucking, you know, fuck the Olympics. It's, it's my point of view. It's my point of view. I don't care. I don't care what you, you know? Give it a chance. <laughs> Tim Dillon, everybody. Thank you so much. God bless all of you. God bless the city of Austin. <laughs> Guys, that's the show. Did you have a good time tonight? Thank you. Have a great night. We love you. Stand up on the spot with Jeremiah Watkins. Stand up on the spot. Stand up on the spot. Stand up on the spot.